All right, guys, how's it going? Uh, you guys have been asking for the damage tutorial stuff for quite a while now. <clears throat> I've answered questions through message and on comments and whatnot, but this is going to be a pretty decent run through on how to do it. First section will be on tools. Uh, second section will be on foil body damage. The third section will be on manipulating plastic and that will include uh, modifying frames and stuff like that too or at least touch on it a little bit. This is going to be <clears throat> just a run through, show you the basic techniques of it because I can get into depth later with doing live streams and like docs group stuff like that. But this is going to just touch on the basics on how to do all the stuff because the only way you're going to get real good at this stuff is practice anyway. I can show you until I'm blue in the face, but practice is the only way you're really going to get good at it. So with all that out of the way, a couple more disclaimers quick. Uh, number one, practice on stuff that's not, you know, <clears throat> priceless family heirloom or something you spent a whole bunch of money on on eBay. If you've never creased a car or bent a car and you buy a box Imperial on eBay for 140 bucks and destroy it, try to practice, that's on you, not me. Practice on cheap stuff. The, the stuff I'm going to demonstrate things on are cheap, easy to find kits. Uh, second of all, uh, if you don't wear glasses, wear some safety glasses, PPE of some sort, whatever. Make sure you got band-aids and all the stuff like that handy. I've cut myself more times than I care to remember. Uh, thirdly, you're going to be using fire to do this stuff. Be safe, be smart about that. Whether you have a bottle of water laying around like I do, just in case, or if you need a fire extinguisher, odds are you've probably gone too far, but you know, just be safe about this stuff. Don't be doing it if you're, if you're a kid watching this with some of the younger guys in the model group here to watch this. <clears throat> Don't be doing this stuff like on your parents' kitchen table. One, it makes a mess. Two, you have the potential of permanently wrecking the table, all that stuff, and I don't need any messages on little Jimmy destroyed my kitchen table by melting up his model car on it because of the videos you put on YouTube. Okay, I don't need none of that crap. The last thing to keep in mind, number four, is that this video is just going to be a recommendation. All the tools and stuff that I bring up are what I use you don't necessarily need all this stuff. I just found it's easier to have all the tools I need when I need them. And I've been doing this stuff for a long time. A lot of these tools weren't even mine. They were my grandpa's. But I have learned that a lot of the time the best tools you'll have for this stuff are stuff you never expected to be tools, never expected to be useful. So this is not, you know, you need to go buy this, 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 and this. This is just showing you the stuff that I use that makes it easier for me. So I think that's about all I need to cover and get out of the way. So let's get started on tools and what you'll need for the basics. I'll start off pretty simple. Some tape. Tape is always a good thing to have. I usually tape a floor pen to bodies when I'm working on them. It keeps the body spread apart, holds things square-ish when you're melting and heating plastic. Second thing, various tweezers, uh, plastic cutters, wire cutters, pliers. Uh, I prefer smooth jaw, <clears throat> smooth jaw pliers. See if I can get it in the light here. There's no serrations on there, it's all flat. I got some needle nose like that, a little bit wider ones. I have more in the drawer, but generally speaking, a pair or two of these, some tweezers, some heavy duty like wire cutters. You're not going to want to use like uh, the small sprue cutters because odds are if you're going to be chopping stuff up when you're damaging bodies, it's going to be the thick, you know, the, the real thick stuff that you know the real fine sprue cutters aren't really cut out for you'll break them bend them dull them up that kind of thing uh, locking forceps are kind of nice just sometimes you do got to pinch stuff together and heat it up these uh, locking tweezers self-closing tweezers i have these ones are really strong and they come in handy these have serrated t uh yeah serrated jaws on them so i put tape on them to kind of mitigate the, the scratches and impression marks 
the general rule with that stuff, just remember, the more things you have to grab the plastic with, the less you're going to be grabbing the plastic with your bare hands. So that's a plus. Grabbing hot plastic sucks with your bare hands. This next section here, I'm going to move the camera down here. I get an awful lot of questions about Dremels and what bits to use, what bits to buy, all that stuff. Um, I buy my... I should say most of my model stuff, tools and whatnot from scalehobbyist.com. I've had this battery powered multi pro Dremel for, oh geez, probably seven, eight years now, maybe a little longer. Uh, the battery life on mine is getting kind of, kind of down there. Just it's had a lot of, a lot of life cycles on the battery, so it's not the greatest anymore. But it does get the job done. I'm usually not down here for super long sessions anymore, anyway. Uh, but you can get Dremels nowadays are fairly cheap. You don't need something like a Proxon. I mean, a Proxon is basically a, a dental drill. It's a lot higher quality than what we need for derby stuff, really. I mean, honestly, I would like to have one, but I'm not spending that kind of money on it. Um, I recommend getting the, the Quick Connect Chucks for them. They just... Let's see here. just threads onto the shank of the Dremel and then it's just like your standard drill chuck which is nice because you can go to any any size uh, shank for the Dremel bits so as far as bits themselves go again this is what I use it's not necessarily like you need to go buy these kind of deal so what I have here let's see these are just various sizes of these cutting balls. That's what I call them. I, I honestly don't know if that's the uh, official name that they're sold by or anything. They work pretty good, especially this little guy here. These big ones are okay, but they're they're just too darn big. It's like trying to you know trying to kill a fly with a sledgehammer most of the time. The kind of medium sized one here and this really little one work pretty darn good. Those are my most used ones. I got one or two in here that should probably just go in the trash. They're just dulled up and beat up. Set this down here. Uh, other bits of various types. I have a couple of these. They're these, I believe, are routing bits or milling bits. I don't know if I'll be able to get it to focus. The really little one there is actually not a ball. It's kind of a, uh, kind of looks like a keystone, a tra uh, not, not a trapezoid. I forget the name of the shape at the moment, but it's got a smaller than 90 degree corner on it right here. So it's, yeah, there we go. Now you can kind of see the shape. But that works really good for doing fine scratches, lines, gouges, all that stuff. Yeah, it's not, probably not going to focus. But yeah, these cone bits are the same way. They're nice for making sharp, uh, sharp dent scratches, stuff like that. And we'll cover that when we get to the plastic bodies. Uh, da, 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 da. Cutting wheels. These come in uh, many shapes and sizes, including the, you know, the OSHA violation right here. This thing is a missing finger waiting to happen. Um, again, this kind of goes into why I told you guys wear eye protection, stuff like that. And these little guys too, these are really nice for cutting. They cut a nice thin kerf. They're easy to easy to chop stuff out pretty quick with with the Dremel. But again, you put any for, any sort of side force on them and they shatter and send shrapnel everywhere. It's not a good time. So again, protect yourself. It's a hobby. You don't need to lose an eye over it. Uh, these guys here, this various. This is a flap wheel. This is just a barrel sander. These have their uses, pretty limited ones, but still uses nonetheless. It's just, you know, little by little, try new things out when you can. It's, like I said, not like go out and buy all these tools or you'll suck at this kind of deal because I still suck at it with all the tools. So just helping you out a little bit here, giving you some advice. Uh, the next thing we're going to go into as far as tool-wise goes, these probably more, more important than, you know, the tweezers, the pliers. Uh, in... When it comes down to it, probably a little more important than the Dremel tool, just because there's a lot more tools here and a lot more you can do with them. Starting out, 
again, kind of goes back to you know, tweezers, stuff like that. These are finer ones that I use for other things, but we'll kind of just push them to the side. Uh, I've got various files here, all the way from stuff that's pretty rough and raspy for roughing body work in. You know, various, you know, like rat tails, you got your conical ones there, uh, straight rectangular ones, triangles, all the way down to what are essentially jeweler's files here. And these things are really, really fine. And they're pretty smooth. They're, they're good for finish work, stuff like that. And they're really small. They get into good uh, tight spaces and stuff really well. Creases, folds, all that jazz. Uh, have yourself a couple. I, I prefer to have two or three X-Acto knives with blades in them at all times just because my bench usually turns into a disaster area and it's just easier to find an X-Acto knife when you've got two laying around. Um... A small chisel blade, sorry the lighting kind of sucks, I didn't realize that guys. A small chisel blade, I do not know what number blade this is. This was among my grandpa's tools uh, when he passed away. But it has become <clears throat> one of my favorite tools. It helps an awful lot. I would suspect a super, super small flathead screwdriver would perform a, a, a similar function, but I have not tested that out yet. This is another, you know, kind of fringe optional one, but I've found it to be p fairly useful. It's just a heavy X-Acto blade, but it has uh, serrations in it, teeth. Found that to be nice when you can't get into certain areas with a Dremel. Another optional one is scalpel blades. These are, you know, as sharp as a regular number 11 blade is. These do seem to hold their edge an awful lot better. And... These are definitely an optional one, too. You can definitely get by without these, but I've found a couple good uses for these. Uh, scraping mold lines and stuff like that, especially. Big, big use for those. And this is another one here, another category, I guess you could say, where there's no rhyme or reason in particular as to what I have. I'm not going to say, you know, go on Amazon, follow this link, buy this thing, because it's not that way. You need picks scrapers, gougers, something to something to make your marks and damage and dents and scrapes and scratches and all that. Uh, a lot of these are dental picks. These were part of my grandpa's tools from his model railroading stuff. Some of the other stuff here, uh, old flathead screwdrivers work really good for it. These super heavy, I'm not, not sure if this was a dental pick or just if it's a scratch all or machinist's pick or what. But I've found this to be a pretty indispensable tool because this end works good for making, well, I guess you'll see later, but making scrapes and dents. This end is actually, well, we'll cover that later too, but same thing. So little tools like that will go an awful long way. You can get uh, file sets and stuff for next to nothing at like uh, Harbor Freight, uh, Menards, Home Depot, th these tiny little file sets like Honestly, I think I bought these at Goodwill like 12 years ago in the, the little home improvement section they have there with all the dollar store hammers and whatnot. I think it was like six bucks with a set of like nine files, and they've lasted me forever. So you don't have to go to the snap-on guy and buy files for this stuff. So This is another tool. I honestly don't know what it is. I don't know where it comes from. I'm not sure if it's for soldering or what, but all it is is some stainless steel there would appear to be stainless steel bristles that come out of there and after you do your Dremel work it works really good for running over the surface of stuff it kind of knocks down the um, I guess you could say pattern that the Dremel can leave at times and works pretty good but we'll get into that more when we get into the plastic section for body damage so that will just about cover it for tools. The only other things I would recommend are maybe some super glue of some sort. Um, that's kind of a subjective thing. I don't like the dollar store crap or the Harbor Freight stuff. I have uh, two, 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 two. made by Zap. They have all sorts of different uh, thick, thin, medium, slow dry, fast dry, all that stuff. It's a good idea just to have a mixture of the stuff as well as accelerator and debonder because nothing is worse than when you super glue stuff to stuff that's not supposed to be super glued 
<clears throat> and debonder will help a lot with that without you know ripping skin off your fingers, ruining the model, all that jazz. So some super glue and debonder. Some regular liquid glue. To me, extra thin works excellent for this. And the last thing that you'll probably need, at least the last thing I can think of right now, I'm sure I'll think of more as I go along. You'll need a source of flame of some sort. Okay. So whether it's Bic lighter, candle, matches. I prefer, I shouldn't say prefer, but I often use a Zippo just because it's nice for when you really have to heat something up for doing a lot of work. Set it like that. I've seen guys use the little decorative candles too. That works as well. So, But again, it just goes back to be safe with it. Don't burn your house down, all that fun jazz. So that will about do it for this section. And next we will jump into doing bodies with foil foil damage so I'm gonna stop this section here and hopefully this will all be stitched together into one video for YouTube alright guys in this section we will be talking about doing bodies with metal foil uh, this will include the uh, I guess I'll be using the metal HVAC tape it's the stuff that I prefer because it's basically foil with the adhesive on the back already so a couple things to note to start with uh, foil can be can make some pretty cool effects. It can make some awesome looking cars, but it can also be a very double-edged sword. You can have some aspects that look absolutely incredible, and other parts of it that you're just not real happy with, not real fond of. And this car, rather this body, because it's never been finished like most of my stuff, is a prime example of both sides of that coin. So, you can see... And the, the doors and stuff look pretty good. There's a lot of a lot of good looking stuff in there. <clears throat> and this was what I had drawn up, what I wanted done with the wagon. We'll get into that phase of stuff here in a minute. Now the, the doors look pretty good, the front fenders look pretty good. You, know, you got your, your gouges and scrapes in there, your holes that have been put in it ripped in there. Quarter panels look alright. You know, stuff like that looks pretty good when you're doing foil. Where it can become really tricky, especially with something like this, is on a wagon. Because the, the light kind of betrays it here, it makes it look better than it does. But the roof looks pretty rough. Um, the tailgate especially looks pretty bad. It doesn't really match the rest of it. I got a pillar that's split here. Uh, the quarter panel and the tailgate are not attached anymore. And I mean, I've actually sold these these cars the plastic wagon over here the fresh one these were a pair I don't know if you guys remember uh, seeing that one painted before because I had stripped it a while ago and I actually sold these and bought them back and it's it is not it has definitely seen some better days it has not had a good life it's been beat up pretty bad uh, throughout shipping and what have you so you can in fact do basically full cars with foil uh, this one the roof is still plastic there's still some plastic in behind the door panels too and we'll kind of get into that with the donor body here stuff like this it's always a good idea to plan out what you want done uh, this one these wagons I drew up a couple different paint jobs and stuff for these it actually ended up being one pretty similar to this with the uh, the black and the white flopped around but it's a good idea to have a plan as to which way you want to go with stuff before you get there because it saves you from ruining stuff. Another example of a foil body was this one that I did ages ago. I drew up what I wanted done with the frame and I made the body fit that, which is... It worked out okay for this car, but honestly, after doing it, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it that way because it can be... It can be pretty sketchy. There were several times I thought I was not going to be able to fix this car or make it work. So, And these bodies, the biggest drawback to them, in my opinion, is that they are really fragile. Uh, unless you've really got a solid frame underneath to kind of tie the rest of the body into. They're, they're, they don't hold up very well to handling. All right, So if you plan on building one and it just sitting in a case and never taking it anywhere never bringing it to shows or whatever you know it's it's probably better to go 
just with plastic. But we're going to go over some tips on how I do uh, foil bodies. I do have one other one to show you here quick to kind of give you an example of these. This was built by uh, Jacob Glasson. If you guys are in the docs group, you know him. And I actually bought this on an auction site on uh, Facebook. I didn't get a real good look at it. I didn't know who did it. And then I seen the bottom underneath, and I'm like, you know, these look like the ones that, that he makes that they actually, you know, smash into each other and stuff with. So I bought it because of the paint job. Uh, you guys know that I'm a big big Mopar fan, and Mont Sweat was the Mopar dude. So, yeah, you can do whole bodies with them. This whole car is is foil from the roof down to the floor. So it's not, it may not be quite as as detailed as, you know, the, the full plastic you know, static display ones, but that isn't really what he built those cars for anyway. And the car that he's building right now is going to put all of our stuff to shame anyway. So, one, oh, I lied, I had, I had one more example. This was actually built by Nate Lloyd, I believe. I bought from him a while ago. And I could be wrong on that. Please don't, please don't be mad at me if I am. It's been a while. Another example of foil. Cars like this, this is a 59 Imperial with the that had uh, what I like to call a floating door post, where the, the post doesn't actually go up to the roof, it doesn't actually add any structure to the side of the car. With these doors like this, man, that's about perfect. Because they'd, they'd get bent into the pillar and then kind of pop out and they'd just be kind of flopping around there, especially when it's just chained like that. And this thing looks banging. I can't wait to actually do some work on this, this body and get it done, so. All right, enough of me yapping. I'll give you guys what you're here to see camera focused okay so I know I just got done saying it's a good idea to have a plan as to what you're gonna do with stuff this one I am just gonna kind of wing it because it's just for demonstration purposes it's not gonna be anything too pretty or too spectacular I'm gonna be doing the rear right rear quarter panel with this with foil this is your standard uh, metal HVAC tape you can get this at any hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, your local Ace Hardware store, whatever. A roll of this stuff will last you an awful long time. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can either do a single layer like this, like I'm going to do, or you can double it, you know, whatever. It's something you got to get it and play around with it. It takes some practice. So the way I recommend doing this, if you're going to do a relatively straight body panel, just cut a section out like this. I've already started with the Dremel. There should be just a couple little pieces to pop out. Little sections. I can do it without cutting my hand off. It'd be even better yet. This is going to be very rough and very hack and slash, so... thing forever and I still put the battery in backwards half the time. I don't like the noise of the Dremel, sorry. Alright. So, you got a little bit of a skeleton there. That'll just kind of hold on to your plastic. Or your uh, foil, rather. I found it a lot easier to do it this way instead of just doing the whole quarter panel out of foil with no plastic and no structure to help hold it in place. It just the results are just a little better this way, in my opinion. But it's one of those things, like I said, you're going to have to mess around with and find your own way of doing it. I'm not. Uh, in this particular video, I'm not about to sit and do the comprehensive, you know, cut-by-cut -cut guide on how to make stuff look really good because, like I said, I don't think my stuff's all that great anyway. So, we're going to kind of just wing it. Alright, so, let's see. So, what we're going to do on this side, uh, I'm not going to do a whole lot of 
you know, body bent up or in or any of that stuff, or uh, rather, not going to do a whole lot of body bending up. You're going to do just your basic, just take your lighter. The object is just to heat it, just soften the plastic. You don't want to melt it with the lighter. Soften it to where you can push it in, dent it, bend it, do whatever. I'm not holding the heat directly on the plastic. It's pretty close, but not directly on it. I don't want to start it on fire. slid back a little bit. That's not good. That's right. It should still work. Okay. Alright. Do you see how the body did that? It kind of popped out. It's because I had pressure on here on what's in the wheel well. And once I softened the plastic up back here, pushed out and popped out and we don't want that Let's blow on it cool it down a little bit and when you're doing this foil stuff it's not as important to be quite as precise as when you're dealing with plastic because the foil stuff <clears throat> I mean you screw up a foil body panel cut another one out of the roll of tape and start over. Uh, you mess up plastic body panel and you can fix it but it's just going to take you a long time. I've got a prime example of that that I'll show you once I once I get to that section. So, Alright, so you see the nice straight quarter panel there. Sorry the lighting is not the greatest down here. It just moved about a month ago. Don't have all the I don't have all the lighting set up perfect yet. So there's your nice straight quarter panel. Alright. And here's our damaged quarter panel. It's all caved in and what have you. So, in order to do these panels, cut a section out. Usually, you know, pull your tape out like this. Hold whatever section of the body up you need. Trace it out. It's good to have mechanical pencils or sharpies, especially mechanical pencils for stuff like this. Trace out the bottom, and I leave a little lip on the bottom about, I don't know, it's that eighth or sixteenth of an inch or so, where I can tuck it underneath the bottom lip of the quarter panel. And then the rest, I'll trace out the back of the quarter panel and where the top is. I won't cut it where the top of the quarter panel is. I'll leave some extra. But draw out the wheel well, cut out the wheel well, and you want this to go past the section that you're damaging. In this case it goes all the way to the door seam which is uh, under nor normal circumstances is probably a bit much but the whole side of this car is going to end up being uh, foil for this demonstration so we'll do the door too once we get to it. Alright, so you see that there. What I will do is I will cut, let's see, let me make sure first So I'll cut out where the pillar is going to be. And again, I'm not doing this real precise like because I'm trying to do this uh, you know, for the sake of time. <clears throat> try to do all this stuff in basically one take because I don't really have any video editing software so if I screw up here it really screws the whole video. Alright, so pillar's cut. Let's kind of do a dry fit. Alright, and that looks, looks pretty good. About as good as I'm going to get it I think for now. And, and then I'm doing kind of an expedient job on this. I don't expect it to be perfect. Okay. 
Okay, so now this here, you'll see that I have two lines down here on the bottom, both of which that follow the contour of the, the bottom of the quarter panel. So what I would do is I would first draw that first line and then I move it up a little bit. So I've got a little bit of extra there, so I've got a lip that goes along the whole length of this, all right? So you've got a little bit of material to tuck underneath the bottom of the quarter panel to hold it on. And that's going to help you a lot with this foil. All right, so I should have done this beforehand. You want to remove, in most cases, the molded trim lines and fender flares, uh, fender trim, stuff like that, or at least knock it down a bit. Okay, kind of dull that up a little bit. And actually, what I'm going to do. Don't typically put the heat directly on the plastic, but on thicker sections like this at the top of this wing, um, you kind of don't have a choice. Just do it in spurts. Don't sit there and hold it, because otherwise it'll it'll either start on fire or it'll completely melt the trunk, and you don't want to do that. So, all right, so there's your dry fitted sheet. And generally. <clears throat> what I like to do is I like to start from one end and go to the other. I don't typically peel the whole thing off of there and try putting it on all at once. I will when I don't really have a choice. Looks like this time I might might have to do that actually, but yeah, okay, there we go. So there's about half of it unpeeled. Alright, so I'm gonna flip it over. You don't have your your penciled guide mark anymore because the paper's not on there. We're just going to go for it. Alright. So, before you go just trying to stick the whole thing on there, do a quick eyeball and check the alignment as a whole. It looks like we can scoot it back just a hair. Maybe. doesn't want to, but it's going to. Yeah, it looks a little better. It ain't perfect, but it'll have to do. Alright, so now I will go from one end to the other. And for this trick, or I shouldn't say trick, but for this step, what actually helps a lot is a pencil eraser. If you're just kind of rubbing the, the foil down, you want to try to get as many of the wrinkles and stuff out of it as you can. A lot of the time it can be really difficult to do that. And for a damaged section like this, <clears throat> I'll get the front half started or front third or quarter, whatever. I'll run down the middle here where it's dented. Kind of work my way up and down. Kind of want to work as much out of those creases as you can. And actually, a, a good stiff paintbrush can work for this sometimes as well too. Um, it's got to be, you know, it can't be a brass or aluminum bristled like grease brush or scrubbing brush, but a paint brush with real stiff bristles will help. So you want to press that in, get it as tight to the plastic as you can. Okay, so this is a good start, but as a whole it looks pretty crappy right now. Yeah, I 
definitely didn't uh, didn't quite cut that perfect to fit the pillar, did I? Throw around inside the wing. All right. Fold your extra underneath your quarter panel and your wheel well. All right. <clears throat> so, doesn't look very much look like a derby car, does it? Not yet, anyway. So, what you can do from here might seem counterintuitive. foil will reflect quite a bit of the heat so a lot of the time it does take quite a while to heat this up like this. Soften that plastic underneath the foil. Good push, let it cool down. It kind of started to wrinkle a little bit. And now, you can take, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the sharp pointy ends of your picks for stuff like this, but these round edges work really good for it. Put your creases and stuff in there. You can kind of back drag the points, stuff like that. It's been a really long time since I've done a foil body. Go in here. It's melting the adhesive on the back side of this. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Look a little more like it should, but I'm still not quite there. I do these videos, it's really kind of backfiring on me. It's showing me just how far out of practice I am. A trick to remember with this stuff, especially if you want to do car that's smashed real bad if you want to do you know a GM that's nosed up or a Vic that's nosed up just always remember that your <clears throat> your body panels and stuff they don't get longer nothing ever gets longer on a derby car so you have to make sure that your stuff gets shorter as you go and not longer like you can you can bend in the top of this quarter panel to make the trunk kink up, but that doesn't mean you can stretch the bottom of it. You know what I mean? I hope that makes sense. I'm going to pop the floor out of this bad boy. It's fighting me more than helping me right now. I'm starting to get somewhere. The body's getting warped up pretty bad, though. This is probably not the best... Uh, this car to use for a demonstration car because the trunk and the quarter panel on these things is a mile long. There we go. 
that's what was wrecking the whole thing right there, that transition. pick here. It's really, really important to be careful when you're doing this, when you're trying to you know, gouge out and make some damage marks because you can do things like this. I'm trying to get it to focus. Sorry, I didn't realize how bad the focus was with the, the foil messing with it. <clears throat> there we go. It's real easy to go ahead and do this. And, you know, a gouge or a tear, now and then isn't bad. You know, you want to put going up here, deep in the corner, you know, deep in the pocket, something like that. That's fine. It's when you start getting carried away with it that it looks bad. Because, like, this gouge right here, honestly, it's a bit too large for my liking. Oop. down in there. I'm sorry. I'm taking this bent end pick, getting down in there. I popped it back out a bit. There. And I popped it in, shortened it up a little bit. And what I'll do real quick. Try this at home, kids. Just threw a real quick shot of gray primer on there, and hopefully you can see a little better. And it's uh, it's pretty far from perfect, and in all honesty, it looks like crap to me. But you know, for a real quick. 10 minute job it's a good start it still needs a lot of massaging and a lot of work but that's kind of the basics of it if you're going to do something that's real smashed up where you know the whole back end is packed in like this like there's no plastic in the back end of this car besides the floor the only plastic on this car actually is a section just behind the doors just in front of the doors the doors and the roof the rest of the body is it's all metal and I think there's actually a small section in the front fenders too. So if you're going to do something where it's real smashed like that, you don't necessarily want or need to leave a rib framework in it like on this uh, this 57 300 body. So just, you know, you got to play with it. You got to mess around with it, practice. So one other one we'll go over real quick is, and this will kind of wrap up the foil stuff because there's, one, there isn't a whole lot to it that I can really... I can show you the basics of it, but actually teaching you how to do it is is not uh, it's not something I can really do. You're going to have to practice at it and get better at it on your own. There is pencil. <laughs> so normally for this, I would actually it looks pretty. Yeah, whatever. Let's cut it right there. Call it good. Normally for this, if I would be doing this on a car that I plan on keeping, or whatever, um, I would have this stuff drawn out a lot better. You know, the, the panels for the doors and whatnot. But, like I said, for demonstration purposes, this will work all right. So, what we're going to do on this one, I'm just going to show you real quick how I made door panels like this. There's some, there's plastic behind it, panels are covered, but there's still dents and gouges and whatnot in it, just because it looks really good, and especially if you plan on building, you know, 80s and newer stuff, Crown Vicks, what have you, <clears throat> that torn sheet metal is a lot more common, it seems, on those cars than it is on, like, old iron, for instance, so, so what you're going to do, you know, dent your door in a bit, you know, don't cave it in all the way into the battery box, but... 
then you're going to cut. Leave your raised section here, your raised section here. So girls getting tired. The battery on this thing has definitely seen some better days, boys. Cut out of there. Get your exacto knife. Get rid of your burrs. Kind of going to cut down the sharp edge. Again, be really careful doing this because these things, when they cut you, they cut you to the frickin' bone. So I'm probably taking off a bit more than I should right here, but this is definitely not uh, not exactly in the. <clears throat> Designed uses for the number 11 Excel hobby blade. Probably a little heavier than what it was designed for, but. Alright, so. When you do this, what you can do, you can cut out more of this too. I probably should have cut out a bit more, especially up front. What you can do is you can put your floor pan back in. Cage that I have sitting here. I don't know if it'll work for this. It might be a little too wide. Well, it's actually too narrow, surprisingly. So, you can go inside here where the door is pushed in and grind all this down so it stays flush all the way. And what I do, <coughs> grind it all down so it's flush or as flush as you can get it. Put your cage in your floor and put your floor pan in here so your door bar is sitting in that gap. And when you put that you know what, let's just do that quick. There's no point in me just telling you. I'm here to show you. I might as well show you how to do it the right way. Now, it probably wouldn't be as uh, <clears throat> quite this extreme on an old iron car, but it might. This is where your, your old schneedle nose come in handy. Just do a nice deep score on there and then you can just rip chunks out. Okay, I think that should be enough of it out of there to make this work. Now, I'm going to have to, excuse me, cut some more out here.
cutting this pretty much as close as I want to cut it to the end of that door. Because you want to leave some material to attach the, the tape to. Let me just see something quick. You can cut it all the way through too, it don't matter. It's just I find it a little quicker to do it this way. And it would appear that my Dremel is about on its last leg, which is not a good thing. Especially considering I still have the plastic section of the video to record yet tonight. I was hoping to have this up tonight. Alright, so take your sharp edge down again. This looks really crappy. It looks really crude. It's definitely not my, not my finest work by any stretch of the imagination. But I'm trying to do all this basically in one take and do it in a fairly timely manner, so I'm not recording a two and a half hour long video on how to do this. <coughs> COVID's been kicking my butt for the last week, so I'm just happy to be out of bed and up doing something. All right, so what we're gonna do here, all right, see how that aligns pretty close to the top of the door. I'm not gonna fold this over the top of the door. At least not far. I'm not gonna do it like the quarter panel where I had you know, a quarter inch hanging over it from the top. I'm not gonna do that with this. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna get it fairly close We're going to stick the top, the whole top seam. Move it forward just a hair. It looks like I might have cut this one a little bit short. Okay, so we're going to have a little there, and that'll work. <clears throat> Ideally, what I like to do with these, for like for door skins, I like to have them where they're, they end at the door seam. That way, when you put your door strapping on, uh, it covers up where it joins up, or, you know, it just looks like a door seam. If you're doing, like, your five-on-five five off plates, it just looks like a door seam. So, what you can do, probably shouldn't have pushed that down quite yet, but, well, we're going to run around with her. So, I know that my door seam is up here somewhere. Where is it? Okay, rub this down. There it is, right there. Cut this. Fingernail is a good tool to find that seam. I think that's it. If not, it's going to be darn close. Alright, so we'll just peel the... Peel the foil off the fender if it'll come off there. Looks like it's going to be stubborn. 
I think the main problem is that the foil tape that I have is sold. I think the adhesive is starting to break down on it. It got real hot when we moved one or the other because it's leaving residue everywhere. Okay. So there's your basic outline of the door. <clears throat> I'm not going to do the back seam just because I didn't trim the back seam on the quarter panel piece either. So you can take your cage, if I did this correctly, which I don't quite know if I shaved it down flat enough behind the door or not, but okay. Hold that in place. It's a lot easier when it's attached to the floor and it's in there the way it's supposed to be. Okay, and you press your, your outer door skin in here. It helps to hold the cage in the right spot too. Okay. Yeah, it kind of might be a little difficult to see because of the reflection and whatnot, but we'll uh, fix that here momentarily. Just give me a second. What I'm going to do... Ouch. I'm going to take the back side of this, not the, not the pointy end, the round end. Gonna make some scratches, some dents, dings. Some of these wrinkles and stuff that are up here that just don't quite look right. I'm going to try to work those out. It's usually better to do that as you go. Rub this stuff down hard against <clears throat> those rounded off edges we put in the door. Should have went a little further up on this. You can see it looks kind of strange that there's... <clears throat> You know, this center square punched out of the door. And it just doesn't quite look right, but that was my fault. Like I said, I'm kind of in, in a rush here trying to do this in a timely manner. All right, so we've got our outline of our cage there. So I think we'll take down here. Let's do a nice big scratch. A small tear in the bottom of the door. A little tear up there where it kind of frames this. I'll take this blunt end, this soft end, or soft curve rather, just kind of press it along the door seam. And if you really want to get spicy, what you could do with some of these, you can peel that. <clears throat> and something like this, it's nice to have like uh, rubbing alcohol, where you can just rub this adhesive off the foil. But you can peel a section out of that door, and then you can see your cage, you can see inside. And you can do that, you can get as exaggerated with that as you want. You know, rip a good chunk of the door skin off there. Or you can do small sections, you know, little tears, uh, dents, creases, seams, scratches, scrapes, you know, the whole nine. And it's, it's a lot of practice, it's a lot of hit and miss, you need to figure out and tinker with making the plastic underneath you know how do I want to put it you're gonna to want to make the plastic underneath the right shape and profile before you even put the foil on it and a lot of the times that's the biggest frustration with this for me anyway and you know like I said it just it takes practice you got a, you got a monkey with it you're not gonna you know, Rome wasn't built today you're not gonna have it mastered overnight It, it's not not as pronounced as I'd like it to be. There, there needs to be more scratches and stuff in that for it to really look good. But for the sake of demonstration purposes. And then the top up here, what I'll do is I'll fold this down around the pillar. And then just run the X-Acto knife along the base of the pillar there. And then peel that off. Because you do want it to overlap a very small amount over the top of the door. Bottom of the door doesn't matter so much, but you're going to want a little bit over the top of the door so you don't have the, the seam where the foil ends up there. So, so there's that. You can do the same with the front sections here. 
uh, the front front fenders, front quarter panels, whatever the hell you want to call them. For these, if you're going to do a very nosed up kind of vehicle, something like that, or uh, or this wagon, like this wagon, there's the wagon. There's no plastic at all in the front fenders. Um, that Fury in the background there has plastic along the top and I would, I would recommend leaving some form of plastic in there I mean you can see how flimsy this is if you don't ever plan on taking the bodies off the frames once they're on it's fine but there's one other thing I would like to touch on with this section with the, with the foil section um, and that's the fact that you can use both of them together use plastic and foil for body damage you don't have to you know there's no there's no rule with any of this, it's model building, but there's no, no hard and fast rule that you have to have just plastic or just metal, because there are some, some things with plastic that are basically just impossible to do. You're not going to get that good of a look with plastic. Like this car, I'm pretty darn happy with the body as a whole. A lot of you guys have seen this car. It's in. It's kind of getting back to where it should be after USPS destroyed it. But you know, the whole trunk back here, on top, this is all plastic. And it took it took a lot of hours of Dremel work to make that look right. And I finally got it to where I was pretty happy with it. Put the body on, and then I realized that. I have the trunk floor to do and in order to do the trunk floor the, the main reason I couldn't use plastic for that is in order to get the body off I need to the the floor essentially needed to flex more than plastic would have allowed it to do so for that this section right in between the frame rails back here this is actually foil back here cotton ball fuzz in there Q-tip fuzz, something. So this section back here, between, oops, sorry, wasn't paying attention to the camera. This section is metal in the floor. There's, there's no way I was gonna make plastic look that good. I'm not, I'm not that good with a Dremel, and I don't have that kind of time. So that, that section right there is foil. There's no reason why you can't use both. It ends up making the car, you know, if, if it makes a better model, it makes a better model. You just gotta gotta monkey around with the stuff and tinker with it to make it work right. So that'll about cover foil. I'm gonna let my Dremel charge a little bit, and I, then I will record the plastic section. So it might not be till later tonight this video gets put up. But I hope you guys enjoyed that section. We'll be on to plastic next. All right, guys, this is going to be probably the last section on this subject. Uh, I might do a small follow-up video and just post it in the docs group on uh, bending frames and stuff up. I don't really have a, a donor frame to give up right now to, to do one of those. <clears throat> but this is just going to be kind of a, a quick overview on doing body damage in plastic. We just covered doing it in the metal foil and you can definitely make some pretty good looking bodies in plastic it just takes an awful lot more time and patience uh, this car like i said in the last part of the video is all plastic except for between the frame rails down here and the trunk pan um, the rest of it is all plastic including the upper part of the trunk here and it's still still kind of beaten banged up from when it got mailed back Thanks to the wonderful postal service, but you know things like this door and stuff. I'm really happy with how it how it turned out. The fender turned out pretty good. Um, got the hood laying around somewhere. I have a different engine in this car than what I had to begin with, but this fender didn't turn out quite as good as I wanted it to. But this back door turned out pretty good. I'm just going to show you guys kind of the the general process on. <clears throat> Sorry, the focus isn't working quite as well as I'd like it to. The general process that I have for making damage like this. So, 
Alright, let me pick up the pieces of this thing here and get it out of the way. We're going to do work on two things. Come on. Alright. Yeah, this guy, this project has been ongoing for an awful long time. Um, that's one that we're going to use to do to show you kind of how you clean up more extreme heavy damage sharp dents stuff like that and then I'm going to try to do kind of a, a more gentle dent on the, uh, the demonstration mule here just kind of bend the trunk lid in so we'll start out with doing the trunk here we're trying to do the trunk I should say let's get my camera set up how I had it before I'll try to pay better attention to uh, <clears throat> where the camera's looking and how it's focused and stuff for this segment. Alright. So. For the most part, it's just going to be the, the cutting balls like I showed you guys before. I do have a couple of stone bits that I'll use if needed. We'll kind of see how this goes from here. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to bend this corner of the trunk in here and we'll kind of shape and carve from there. So take my lighter, heat this up here. Trying to heat that corner evenly <clears throat> so it's not just the upper or lower portion of it that gets heated up. As you probably hear there, I'm just blowing on the plastic to get it to cool down a little quicker. And we're going to heat up here. I'm going to kind of push that up just a little bit. finger but right. Just dump some water over that and cool it down a little quicker before I start hogging on it with the Dremel. Inside's still pretty warm. The outside's cooled off enough where I can take the Dremel to it. Just pop this cage out of here. And the, uh, the adhesive on that metal tape from the, the foil section is definitely, <clears throat> definitely bunk. I need to get some new stuff. It's just so old that adhesive broke down in it, so. Okay. So, take this here. We're just going to kind of 
trying to figure out a way to do this well where it's easily seen and all that jazz because I'm gonna have to pick it up there's no two ways around that so so what I'm gonna do first is I'll take a pencil mark out where I want the sharp creases to be so I'm gonna want those to be right along the trunk line here and down in here I'm gonna want that to be pretty Pretty sharp crease. And I think we'll try to do one right along this high point here as well. Okay, and that's not uh, <clears throat> that's not a set in stone guarantee. You kind of see how it goes. There will be times when you just straight up screw that up. I do it all the time, so don't sweat it. Right, so I got my bigger of the cutting balls on here. So we're going to gouge this out. I'm trying to put it in a spot where you can see it with the camera. And I want to remove almost no material, or no material at all, where the pencil line is. Put a whole lot of pressure on it, you just kind of let the bit do the work. Until you've kind of created a bit of a pocket there. <clears throat> and the rest of, sorry, and the rest of what's down here, that'll get smoothed out and fixed as we go. But, in the meantime, I will take this little guy. Rub this thing in here, get rid of any of the little burrs, the little flash that's on there. So, right, we'll start in on the top. Alright, so, let me just turn this off quick. So, the way the plastic bent here, <clears throat> or rather the way it uh, kind of curved, I guess you could say. I want this to be kind of a, you know, a dent like this, and I want from this crease up here to this one to be concave like this. So I gotta hog a bunch of stuff out of here, and I'm gonna have to take a bunch of stuff out of here. So to do this one, let's take the big ball. speed but not pushing very hard. In fact, hardly pushing at all really, just like I said, letting the bit do the work.
did blow one hole in it, <clears throat> unfortunately. Thin this out too down here next to that line I made in the top of the trunk. This, this part I'm going to do just on the other side of this line, just right along here. I'm not going to get down into there with it, it's too big for that. As far as I dare go with that one. Last all over the place. The only bad thing about this is this method is pretty messy and noisy. It's kind of annoying. I usually wear, uh, usually have my headphones in when I'm messing with this. I don't have to listen to the Dremel, but I can only imagine how loud it's going to be on the video. Alright. What you can do sometimes with this stuff as well, you can build up a layer or two on the inside with just regular uh, sheet styrene. I'm not going to do that this time. Unfortunately, I did blow a hole in it with the Dremel. But you know, like I said, I'm kind of in a hurry. It's same thing with the uh, as with the um, the foil video. Just trying to do it in a timely manner, and I just got a little carried away. Alright, so I'm going to load the small cutting ball that I have in here. I'm going to get down a little bit, a little bit further into this. said before I'm not pushing it's kind of letting the bit do its thing I'm going to get in closer to the ridge with this one because it's smaller. Closer to the peak of that dent. Try to get that as close as I could to there. I want to create <clears throat> kind of a crease in there, kind of a pinch. I 
and that can be that can be really tricky to do when you're running it at um, lower speeds with a bigger ball or the bigger uh, any bit really that has bigger teeth because when you're running at lower speeds you tend to not remove as much material so you tend to push and what will happen then is it will grab and then it will jump over that crease over that seam and then you screw stuff up alright it's definitely not the nicest thing I've ever made but okay We'll take a little more off of this. Take this again. I'll scrub your extra crap out of there. All your burrs and what have you. Okay. So right now it's looking pretty smooth. You know, it's not uh, not great, not horrible. It's a good start. Oops. Trying to get some good light on it and get it to focus well, but so it's a it's kind of a good start on there. It's not great, like I said, but so after that's done, I'm gonna take the small ball out again, and then I'll usually grab. Okay, we'll get to that one eventually. Let me grab uh, this one. Yeah, this one. Grab this guy here. It's a conical bit here. I'm pretty sure this is actually for uh, either like a milling machine or a router. Kind of knock this down a little bit. And this, these are kind of tricky to get used to. take a lot of material off, but they're really good for um, really good for adding kind of a, a sharp cut or a sharp crease to these dents. Especially right underneath the lines like that. I'm not going to go into messing with this bottom corner too much. I should say much more than I already have, but I'll flip this over. We'll kind of smooth some of these rough patches out in here at this. I'm sure the camera can see that. Of course it can't. Sorry about that. Just kind of smoothed out some of the rough areas in here with this. 
Again, no pressure. Don't push on it at all. Just kind of let the bit do its cutting, let it do what it wants to do. You can take this tip here. Don't rub the, um, don't have the whole flat surface against the plastic. But you can kind of lightly score deep down into folds and stuff like that with this. Okay. Yeah. Let's take that one out. This is that small bit that I had mentioned earlier. Um, has the kind of uh, trapezoid shape or whatever it is. Again, I'll run this one at high speed. And don't push on it very hard. So we're going to get right down in the crease of that dent right there. shape of this bit, I'm not pulling any material off of this part, it's only coming off of the bottom down here. So, in order to make this look right, we'll have to flip it over like this, come in from up here. And this makes it sharp from both directions. And again, I'm not pushing on this. I'm just kind of dragging it over, letting a bit do its work. Because what happens when you push on these is either you'll break the bit or you'll push, and it'll do this. It'll skip and bite and jump and grab, and you don't want to do that. It's just like anything else in this hobby. It takes practice. So, it's hard to see, especially since this won't focus, but this dent right here, or this crease rather, is kind of a, a flat top to it, a big ridge, and you don't, you don't really want that. Like you guys have all seen dents on a derby car up close. There's a peak, you know, it's not flat on top. It's not a table. So, what we'll do is we'll take this very carefully Run it along one side or the other, or both. So this is wore down. Oh crap, sorry. So this is wore down. And there's a nice point on there. instead of a big old flat tabletop. Let's see if I can get that to focus better. Doing the best I can with what I got guys, it's just a cell phone, so. And this is where this scrubber deal comes in handy. Now, it is not perfect. It is far from it. I'm the first person to tell you that. But I'm trying to do this with somewhat decent pace here. Because this video is already going to be uh, pretty long. So I can, I'll take these, these conical... Uh, I don't know if they're a grinder bit or what they're for. I really don't know. 
polisher, whatever it is. I'll take these, kind of at a medium to high speed, just to kind of polish some of the texture out of there from the bits. Again, don't push on it. Just let it do kind of its own thing. Keep it away from the high points, the ridges. You're just trying to remove the tool marks from the other bits. And you can also do that with files too. That's why I have so many files because they're the the amount of uses for files never ceases to amaze me. So that's kind of a rough idea on how you do something like that. Like I said, it doesn't look great, but I'm trying to do this in a hurry and do it to where you guys can look at it too, which is not the easiest thing to do when you're not paying direct attention to what you're doing. So now for this one, we're gonna do whoops. We're gonna do some finer work with this one. I'm gonna try to anyway. Hopefully I can do this without uh, you having to listen to me breathe too much into the camera. So uh, I had was asked a while ago on how I do like scratches and stuff in the doors. Um, this body is pretty well beat up to the point where you don't see a whole lot of those, just because there's so many dents and dings and scrapes and all that fun jazz. But something like these, uh, that's actually pretty easy. And I'll show you here on this body again. This poor 57 300 body, this thing's going to be smoked. So when you already have a dented up ding door like this, or border panel or whatever you're going to do it on, heat up your door. And generally I'll heat it until I can feel a decent amount of heat in the plastic on the back side of my finger. It starts to be pretty uncomfortable. Then I'll stop. And just grab a pick, scraper, some sort of tool. Okay, and the, the draw down there, ignore that. And as it cools, you can kind of drag it back through. I wonder how well that'll focus. Probably not real well. Yeah, so it's a nice deep scratch there, and you can take that super fine Dremel bits and go back through it too to make it deeper, more pronounced if you like to. I'll make another one here. Let's focus. Do a smaller one. Crap, that did not turn out how I had planned. Okay. And as the plastic cools, you can run it back and forth through there. Kind of poke it a little bit, if need be. See? And then, like I said, you can carve it out however you'd like with the Dremel, stuff like that. You can also use kind of the more the more blunt end of stuff to do it and this is basically just the roughing in phase this is nowhere near finished see yeah there we go it's a much shallower dent you know, kind of lighter damage as I understand the you know the 
absolutely annihilated super damaged stuff that I do is not for everybody. But just stuff like that is nice for making light dents. Fender bender stuff. So, that's out of the way and we'll go on to doing work on smaller stuff. So on this truck, this side is basically done. There's a couple little spots here that need to be uh, cleaned up, sharpened up a little bit. But stuff in here like this, like this is, this is kind of what I was looking for. Let me hit it with some primer. makes it a little easier to see than just the plain plastic. I do still have some textures to get rid of there. It's a good idea to hit this stuff with shots of primer so you can get a better look at that. But I got a little bit of textures to get rid of there. Marks from the, uh, the tooling from the Dremel bits. Stuff like that to polish out. But up here where it's nice and smooth but still has the dents and creases, that's what I'm kind of going for. Uh, this side I did a long time ago. Um, like most of my stuff, it's a started project that was never finished. This is very much in progress here. You can see the paints wore off, or the primers wore off where I had started touching it up. Um, up in here, all these real jagged tool marks and stuff here, stuff like that's what I'm trying to get rid of. And in here, most of that's gone. Um, not all of it, but a lot of it. And, I mean, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to screw stuff up. I mean, I have stuff in here that i got to clean up yet that I haven't, you know, and this is... This is an ongoing project that I started a long time ago. It's if you're one of those type of people where you can start one project and stick with it till it till it's done, that's great. I'm not one of those kind of people. I got to have a million things going on at once. So, but as for this, I'm going to show you on the other side, the driver's side door, kind of digging out some of those scratches a little bit okay. it's very gentle no pushing let the bit do its deal do the same thing up in here I mean, at this point, I'm more or less sculpting these bodies. Um, like that, that tan imperial or off-white imperial. This is how I did that entire body. And I mean, it took a long time. I got, I bet you I've got, there's got to be 160 hours into just the body on that tan imperial. I got a lot of time into that car. That's just part of the reason why I never actually finished the interior, because I got so burnt out on it, I didn't want to touch it anymore. And stuff like that. I'm going to beat this door up more. This, this entire truck is still around. Um, a guy from Grantsburg named Jeremy Johnson built the truck that this is based on many, many years ago. Uh, it's green and white. It was a 60s Ford pickup. And it's somewhere either in Minnesota or might still even be in Grantsburg. I can't remember 100% for sure, but it's black now. But the thing just has the tar beat out of it. It's a sick looking truck. So, all right. Well, I think to wrap this up, we're going to do a little work on this. Well, we're not going not gonna to work on the fender. I don't have the reference materials in front of me for it. But we'll do a little work back here because this needs it. All right. So these folds and dents back here that are real soft and rounded looking, we just need to sharpen those up a bit. Let's start with this one right here. I don't normally start right off the bat with this real small bit, but when you've got small things to work on, you kind of have to.
the biggest thing that will help you with doing this is having reference materials. Um, I know it's not something that we talk a whole lot about as model builders or as demolition derby model builders. At least not. And in my experience, you know, building tanks and stuff outside of this, like, we don't have squat for reference material, man. Like, going to the county fair, taking some pictures, going to big shows, taking pictures, that will help you more than a lot of people realize. And the, the armor side of this hobby, doing tanks and stuff, like, man, you can get books upon books upon books about one variant of a tank that'll go over the difference between every nut, bolt, weld, you know, etc., etc., on them, especially on your German stuff. Whereas, you know, derby cars, there's no real reference for that because everything is so different. You know, every build is different, every builder is different. So, getting reference materials and basing what you do on that will help you a lot because you're not winging it, it gives you a goal to go after. If you're doing something and it's not looking right, you go, okay, it's not right, so I gotta do it different next time. You don't get better by just you know, not paying attention and just sloughing it out. So. Just kind of hog that out a little bit. Nope, see? And I'm not really pushing on it, but it was enough to make that bit grab and kind of jump outside of that. That's exactly what you do not want to do, because then it'll, it'll jump over that crease, it'll eat into that crease, it'll just make it look wonky. You don't want to do that. So. Okay. So all those burrs and stuff there you see is what I was talking about. That this gets rid of. For the record, it is really difficult to do this with the camera right in front of my face in between me and the work. So I'm trying to show you guys as much as I can, but it's hard not being able to wing this thing around like I normally do. Okay. So you can kind of see, or maybe you can see, it depends on if the camera will cooperate. Like the difference between just roughing things in with the round ball. You see how the, the corners of this up here are rounded? And then you go over and see like, let's see the corners there are rounded. You see like right here where the corners are sharp or sharper. I've come through here with the square bit, well, square-ish bit, the one I just had in, and kind of augged that out you know, made the stuff look sharp. You know, the stuff that's got to be round, the creases and stuff, that has to, you know, that's got to be round, so I use different bits for that. Up here under the fender well, this is actually, I'm pretty sure this is where I left off before. But a lot of the times what you can do to help you with this, take your pencil, color it in. Sorry, the camera focus is not exactly cooperating very well color stuff in with a pencil Then, as you take a little bit of material away it'll take the pencil too those of you that have any sort of uh, machining experience will know this trick you, know, you cover something and die make a couple passes on it and you'll find out real quick if it's square or not Fill in, and it's also kind of the same thing as uh, hitting it with primer. And you can see that there's textures and tool marks in here I need to get rid of yet. See how it's kind of bumpy? It looks almost like uh, maybe like window screen, I guess, is a way to describe it. When you look up in here, there is still, it's, oh, it's pretty faint. But you can still see it in a couple little spots up here. Um, it's been cleaned up for the most part, but I still need to go through it. Uh, you can, it's, it's a bit more pronounced on this side, easier to see. Oh, it's real 
real rough, um, almost pebbly looking, I guess you could call it. And over here, it's smoothed out. There are scratches and stuff in here. That's I don't recall if that's from the little yellow thing I have or if that's just for me getting carried away with the picks and whatnot. But but that's uh, kind of a general overview on how I do the damage with the Dremel. I'm I'm sorry if it didn't uh, didn't sate your your request to know you know every single little minute detail of it, but it's. It's like I've said with everything else I've talked about. The best way to get better at this stuff is just to do it. You're going to have to practice. You know, you don't... Barry Bonds and all those guys, they didn't get into the Hall of Fame by, you know, just showing up on game day and playing. Like, you're, you're going to mess stuff up. You're going to ruin bodies. You're going to ruin models. I, I've ruined a lot of them. I, I've ruined a ton. In fact, I... Uh, I'm talking about not planning a project out well and ruining stuff. This car, um, most of you guys will know this car. It used to be a bright green. It was originally going to be a car that I was going to have the whole back end creased up, and I made it out of aluminum, and that didn't work out. So this Imperial is a prime example of have a good game plan on what you're going to do and stick with it because I have... I destroyed the original plastic quarter panels on it, um, replaced them with aluminum, got a different set of quarter panels, actually they might have been the ones from the car, I'm not 100% sure, uh, destroyed those, and then this quarter panels, or rather these quarter panels, excuse me, are basically styrene sheet that I pretty much made the quarter panels from scratch on, and you don't, uh, you don't want to do that, that's not a good time, so you'll end up ruining really nice expensive hard to find bodies I still kick myself for turning this one into a derby car it was a really really clean body but uh, yeah and I'll, I'll do other videos and stuff on this this subject I'll just post them in Doc's group um, I'm not gonna post you know 10 15 minute videos on this YouTube channel this is just kind of an overview to kind of get you guys headed in the right direction if you have any other questions you feel free to comment below here, message me on Facebook. Most of you guys that are going to watch this video know where to find me. Uh, those of you that don't, it's uh, Doc Demos Model Clinic on Facebook is where most of us hang out. Um, the Cheddar Bob Model Building Group, which is run by Bob Barrows. That's another one where a lot of us derby guys hang out. I know there's another page or two that I'm forgetting, but I'm, uh, I'm on the recovery end from COVID, so my mind is a little groggy at the moment. In fact, I'm jacked up on caffeine so I could do this for you guys. It's been long overdue, but I haven't had the time until now, so I'm going to try to stitch all this together into one video, and I hope you guys gain something from it, and if uh, if you did, liking the video, sharing the video, uh, subscribing to the channel, sharing the channel would be a great big help. I greatly appreciate it, so any feedback or anything, feel free to comment below or hit me up on Facebook. Have a good one, guys. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now.